Hey everybody, this is part two of my series on the painting I did of Abby Cadabby from Sesame Street. In the first video, I encourage you to go watch it if you haven't, uh, we went over how to gather your reference together and build some art direction for your piece, and then we refined the preliminary sketch. Uh, at first there were some problems with the sketch, so I didn't really like the silhouette of the character, and went back to the drawing board, started over. I uh, came up with something that I really like and so what we're going to do now is start blocking in some values and I'm going to talk to you about how I approach that. Since lighting a character can be really complicated, I like to break it down first on a simple sphere and it's somewhat like doing a study. So I took the screenshot of Vanellope and I drew myself a little sphere and then I start just trying to paint that sphere in the same lighting environment that she's in. Just in grayscale for now, we'll add color later. It is important to note that a lot of people like to just go straight into color and there's a lot of merit in painting directly in color right away, um, especially when you have a very strong understanding of values. I like to take this baby step sometimes when something's a little bit more complex. I think that you can work in color and that's great and if you are still learning it's very important to break everything down into small manageable pieces. That way if there's somewhere that you need to improve you can go back and do some more exercises and studies and practice that and really improve on that one thing without getting overwhelmed with all of the different aspects of painting. Um, there's a lot of videos out there on the basics of lighting, understanding how shadows work, rim lights, reflected lights, core shadows, things like that. I'm not going to go into that here. I think that there's a lot of really great teachers out there that have done a great job of putting together videos on that. So I encourage you to check that out if lighting is a struggle for you. There are a lot of ways to approach building up value in your painting. One popular method is to work from the middle out, which is to say to work from medium gray and slowly brighten everything and slowly darken everything until you get to the brightest brights and the darkest darks. In this instance, I started painting in the light in a very soft brush over Abby's face and on her features, following the model that I built of that sphere. Now. Spoiler alert, I again changed directions on this. I did this lighting uh, scheme on this character and decided that I would go back to the drawing board again and I took my, uh, I started working from Vanellope for some reason when I originally intended for this to look like that or to have the spirit of the Toy Story 4 poster. So in that regard, I, I went back and uh, started the lighting over again from uh, using the, the poster of Woody as my reference. This is another great example of sometimes you just have to stop what you're doing, reevaluate your painting process, reevaluate your approach, and look at your strategy. Uh, it's not always about just your artistic skills. Sometimes uh, you've just made a few bad decisions along the way that don't really relate to your actual skills at art. Uh, it's more about the development process. Uh, in this case, I you know went back and did another sphere based on the Woody painting, and then also I changed the orientation of the sphere, you'll notice, after I finished painting it, because while for Woody's portrait it really works to have the light shining from a little bit from below on the left side for our uh, the viewer's left side, and for Abby it really works to have it coming from the top right because of her wand. Right away you can tell that this lighting direction was the right choice because it just looks better with just a few brush strokes you can tell that this was the right decision for this particular piece. And so I slow myself down a little bit, start being a little bit more precise with the brush and working my way down into her body and onto her arms a little bit. I'm also trying to keep a little bit of texture in the brush. Uh, these are all standard or free brushes that you can find somewhere. I don't really think the brush makes that big of a difference. but I do believe in a little bit of imperfection giving a lot more life to your painting. So I try not to use a soft round brush or a, a hard edge brush whenever I can. Um, a little bit of that goes a long way. I think you'll notice that I changed my mind a lot while I'm working on this painting. I reworked her eyes several times. Once or twice they looked a little bit creepy and of course that's okay when it's rough and it's in the sketch phase but then as you start building the actual painting out you may have to revisit something more than once. Uh, her cheek was particularly tricky for me because I felt like there should be a core shadow in there. So throughout the whole thing, there's a lot of backing up, doing things over, and I just hope that you appreciate that sometimes that part of the process gets missed when all you see is the final painting. There's a lot of 
work that goes into changing your mind and uh, catching things before it's too late. So I think you'll notice here that I started painting in this layer that is just an outline of Abby, and then I'm going to fill it in uh, in this pinkish color. And all I'm doing is building a layer mask so that I can isolate her from the background. I'm going to make the background a little bit darker because I want the overall painting to be darker. Uh, if you're going to paint something in a lighter background, that's great too. Go for it. Uh, just make sure that maybe your values you're painting and the background kind of are in sync early. If I'm going to paint a dark character on a light background, it's going to mess with the value scale a lot. So I just just took out the time and uh, did this little cutout. Again, this is sped up, but that probably took you know five minutes or something like that. It's just take the time and, and paint it out when you need it. It'll come in handy. At this point, I'm really happy with the direction things are taking, so I just start trying to have fun with it and clean up some of the rough spots and really refine the character. However, don't fall into the trap of overpainting too small of an area or focusing on one thing. You'll notice I jump around the painting a lot and I always keep a smaller window open so that I have the big picture in mind. If you were painting something traditionally, you would be able to step back several feet and look at your painting and see if it's working. Since you're not able to do that in digital, it's important to be able to see a small version so that you don't get too wrapped up in the details. When I say clean up, let me tell you what I mean. I'm finding places where the brushwork looks very accidental and a little bit chaotic and making it very intentional so that the lighting looks like it all happened on purpose and every brushstroke is there for a reason. I don't think that if there are a few textures here and there or a little bit of uh, unpredictable stuff that's happening, I think that's great, but you should also not have things in your painting that look like mistakes. Uh, and that includes mostly cleaning up the edges and making sure that your lighting is very intentional. So if there are rogue brush strokes in your lighting, you need to take care of those now. Also, this includes fixing some of the anatomical features, uh, tightening up some of the things like the hair. So when I say tightening up, I mean at first the hair looked like it was a little bit of a gray blob and now I'm going back in and I'm really making decisions. So this part is going to be hair, this part is going to be uh, her forehead, and you just have to actually like put that brush stroke in that shows that this is not a gray mask, this is not a blob, and this is what I actually intend for this character to look like. At this stage I think that edges and understanding lighting are very important. So you'll notice that a lot of the work that I'm doing is making clear decisions about where edges are and what the lighting looks like. I'm not so much focused on uh, the details of her jewelry or the details of her hair. I'm focused on the lighting being correct and there being a lot of decisive moves as far as the actual shapes. I like to think of this almost like when you're sculpting with clay. You want to make actual crisp edges out of everything so that the... And, and then when you have crisp edges and you have great lighting, uh, a lot of the work is done for you at that point. You have a lot of leeway with what your uh, individual little brush strokes are like. You don't have to be a total, uh, you don't have to be a, a Zen master of rendering to make your painting look good if you just follow those basic rules and illustrate to the viewer that these are the decisions that make the painting work. If you get those two things right, you've done a lot of the heavy lifting for making your painting look believable. I feel like I should point out that uh, working on Abby's wand at this point, I left super rough for a reason. I knew that I was going to be doing a lot of that at the very last part of the painting. Uh, so don't get hung up on some of the parts that make the painting very exciting too early. Uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff that happens with highlights in the eyes and making certain parts a little bit translucent or glowing. And we're going to do an awesome magic swirl coming off of that wand later so right now we're just gonna leave it in like a, a scribble. With that in mind I did add a few little dark areas into the hair to make sure that I was comfortable with the form of the head and the lighting on her face and tweak the eyes a little bit but right now I'm feeling really good about this value scale painting of Abby and I think that we're ready to move on to the next phase where we start developing the background and adding color. Like I said in my other videos, this is the first time that I've done a painting walkthrough like this. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I look forward to your feedback. 
Uh, please do subscribe if you want to see more content like this from me in the future, and I'll catch you on the next video.